And we didn't plan this, but that's a perfect segue to our next speaker. Because as you described all of the incredible stuff that you've done with the skills you learned here at ASU, this is what Shannon's going to talk about. It's some of the newest thinking, innovative thinking, about what students graduating with a degree in English can do. So our second speaker today is Shannon Luhan, who uh, is a program manager in the Graduate College, also working on a PhD here in the English department at ASU. And Shannon's been working for the last few years in a program that's called Convergent Academics. Connected, Connected Academics, pardon me. And this is a program that's trying to develop innovative strategies for students uh, working in the humanities, in the English department and other humanities disciplines, in terms of what kind of career possibilities they might pursue. Is that kind of an accurate description, even though I got the name wrong? Yeah. Okay. So the title of Shannon's talk today is, she's going to tell us about this good work she's been doing. And the title of her talk is, Convergent Academics Affecting a Culture Change. That's where I got convergent from. Okay. So, uh, Shannon Luhan. Good afternoon. Um, I'd like to congratulate all the award recipients that are here today, and also thank the Department of English for inviting me here to speak. Um, as I prepared my talk, I had no less than five openings. I kid you not. Um, but none of them seemed to fit quite right. I thought about unpacking my title, Convergent Academics Affecting a Culture Change, mm, but no. Uh, then I thought maybe I'd begin by discussing how I felt as a graduate student when I received an award for excellence in literature, but that seemed a little like grandstanding. As I contemplated the advice I might give or the encouragement I could offer, um, my opening fell flat. And I realized that even though I had no less than five directions to go, I had no plan. That's when I was reminded of a quote by Rita Golden Gelman in the preface of Tales of a Female Nomad. Gelman wrote, quote, I move throughout the world without a plan guided by instinct, connecting through trust, and constantly watching for serendipitous opportunities. As graduate students, it's not often that we move through the world without a plan. And while at times it may feel as though the future is uncertain, the nature of earning a graduate degree is intentional. I receive the question very often, what do you plan to do with your degree? As though people are shocked that I'm still in school, um, but also that I believe my degree will afford me something in the end. Yes, something, but what exactly? Is this, this is the question that I turn to in the idea of a plan. What do I plan to do with my degree? Further, what do I think my, my degree will gain for me? Or what will I gain from my degree? Well, the logical answer and the one that I planned for from the beginning was to be a professor of literature in a tenure track position, of course. I mean, after all, isn't that why one would earn a PhD in literature? Right? <laughs> <laughs> and clearly, if I was a professor of literature, not only would I gain a title and a degree, but also expertise, a knowledge, or a learned skill set that would signify that I knew something of value and had earned the right to share that knowledge with others. In part, this is what I believe I will gain from my degree, but that was never entirely the purpose. So I completed my coursework, I passed my exams, and along the way I watched out for serendipitous opportunities. And I found a few, but when I reflected on those opportunities, I realized that more than being separate serendipitous, these opportunities I sought out intentionally. Each workshop, each assistantship, internship, professional development, fellowship, they all aligned with my interests. I was guided by instinct to seek out learning opportunities that challenged me, took me outside my comfort zone, and helped me grow as a scholar. I learned how to build a website in Drupal, coordinate a symposium, pitch a research idea, write for a broader audience, 
understand the nature of a successful grant proposal, and explain my very jargonistic geospatial contemporary research literature idea to people outside my discipline, outside the university, and more importantly, still hold their interest when I talked about my research. I cultivated a well-rounded skill set that improved my scholarship and helped me see myself as a professional practitioner, a scholar professional, if you will. During the course of my graduate studies, I gained the knowledge that signifies that I know something of value. What do I believe I gained while earning an advanced degree? I learned to and was recently reminded by Ames Hawkins' keynote address at the Connected Academics Colloquium for Career in the Arts and Humanities, to own that I am an expert at my own research. As students, I find that this type of thinking is most often very hard for us to believe. The imposter syndrome runs high among many of us. But claiming your exp expertise is something that you, the I, need to own. The message was abundantly clear to me as I went on the job market this last year. I had to learn how to claim my expertise and sell it. Which leads me back to the idea of convergent academics and owning all parts of my degree, my time to degree learning. As I said about drafting a CV, a resume, and multiple cover letters, I really had to evaluate what I had done as a graduate student. I also had to evaluate what was most important to me. What kind of job did I want? Where did I want to live? And what would make me the most happy? I knew that my primary fo focus was Alt-Ac because I knew I wanted to stay in Arizona. I knew that I wanted to use the skills that I had built to move beyond just research. I knew that an R1 wasn't a place for me. I wanted to build a community. I wanted to have an impact, not only on the students, other people in front of me, the people in front of those people, programs, institutional policy, social constructions. I wanted to impact the wider world. As I weeded through my desires, I saw how the intentionality of my opportunities afforded me the ability to move between academics, non-academics, and alternative academic spaces. I was able to, be, I was able to own verbally that I intended to pursue an alt-ac career. In fact, the more traditional academic line became a backup plan, which always sounds a little bad when I say that out loud. Um, but what I really want to focus on is that I was able not to just own my desire for an alt-ac career, but to openly verbalize that desire. Why would that be scary? It's scary because when you tell colleagues that you're pursuing a PhD, but you don't plan to be a tenured professor, it can leave you feeling like a failure. Or it can leave you feeling like they might perceive you as a failure. It's scary because you might be letting down your advisors. Again, leading you back to feeling like a failure. It's scary because you're worried about not being taken seriously as a scholar. And it's scary because you're afraid that maybe you will no longer be pushed to be the best that you can possibly be. The unknown is scary. What kind of job am I going to get? And who can help me get that kind of job? Who can I talk to about my career choices? I knew that my fears were grounded in a tradition, in a value set that has persisted because perhaps more than with any other degree, a humanities degree must be justified, earned in a trial by fire type of narrative. Returning to that question, what do you plan to do with your degree? I know that that's a loaded, I know that that's loaded with implications, that a humanities degree was misunderstood for its value in the world, especially in an economic driven system. A humanities degree does not usually net the large salaries, research grants, or prestigious recognitions. Thus, those of us in the humanities work all that much harder to hold to traditions that are meant to evaluate the significance of the degree, 
to signify the dehumanistic understanding of a social culture, the economic driven system, the diversity of faiths, ideologies, and peoples of our world. We need and we will need to understand that or we will be living in a dystopic environment. What I learned, what I learned though, is that by holding so tightly to these beliefs, we aid in their persistence. If we cannot have real conversations within our own field about what one can do with a humanities degree, how can we, how do we expect those outside our field to fully appreciate what we bring with us? There are diverse career pathways that someone with a humanities background may pursue. For instance, a recent graduate who is now working in the Aspen Institute in DC as a seminars manager, or another ASU grad who is the Director of Marketing and Communications at Health Choice? Are those like Stacy Hartman, Project Coordinator with the MLA, or Nikki Agate, Head of Digital Initiatives with the MLA, or myself, Program Manager at the Graduate College? These are viable careers where we use our humanistic training on a daily basis. Through initiatives like Connected Academics, where we explore building a variety of skills to pursue diverse career paths, we can affect a culture change. If we shift our language, our thinking, to recognize that the value of an advanced degree in the humanities goes beyond the classroom, specialized journal article, niche market book, and beyond the walls of the academy, we will stop hearing about the crisis in the humanities or the lack of jobs for someone with a humanities degree because we will make those jobs for ourselves. As graduate students, we will learn to embrace both serendipitous and intentional opportunities that impact our outcomes. To affect a culture change, we must be willing to adapt an also and mindset rather than an either or mindset. I am a researcher, a teacher, a program manager, a skilled scholar who looks for opportunities to mobilize my knowledge and at the heart of the degree, I believe that that is the purpose mobilizing knowledge or bridging the gap between research and expertise and practice to improve the system that we live in. Thank you.